So I wanted to start with what is imposter syndrome? Because I know it was something that um, when I first heard it, well, do you remember when you first heard what, like, do you remember when you first heard it? When I first heard the term? Yeah. Um, no, but I felt, you know, I'd, I'd felt it before, but I can't tell you the first time I heard it. Yeah. Okay. So the definition is feeling inadequate in professional related endeavors, despite having more than enough expertise and experience in a certain field. And I also liked what they said down here about, and I, I can put the, the, the quote in the, or the, the source in the chat, but um, it says high people in high achieving positions complained of feeling self-doubt, incompetence, and fear of not performing well. Um, oh, uh, so feeling like success is impossible, feeling incompetent despite demonstrating competency, fear of not meeting another person's expectations, feeling like past successes and hard work were only due to luck. That one gets me a lot. Feeling incapable of performing at the same level every time. That one gets yeah. me a lot. Feeling uncomfortable with receiving praise or congratulations. Who's good at taking a compliment? Like nobody. Right. Feeling disappointed over current accomplishments. Feeling doubtful of successes. Feeling constant pressure to achieve or be better than before. Feeling stressed, anxious, or depressed from feelings of a... Oh, gosh. I don't know that I've ever felt <laughs> depressed. Um, um, I've, I've overanalyzed things to the point where it's like, you know, it's, you know, not... A, I don't think full blown depression, but you know, a drink surely helped out the situation. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, at what point in your career did you start feeling any of these things? Like, did it, it wasn't at the beginning of my career, it wasn't until I actually knew a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I think you have to have a certain level of knowledge. Well, I think it's when you have a certain level of knowledge where you start looking at what's next or like what, what, you know, or you, you start having people that you look up to and you start to have that, and that are, that you perceive as much that are the, the professionals in their field. And then when you start trying to aspire to that, like, ooh, not, you know, out of, out of like respect and like, this is what I want to do with my career. Yeah. So, okay. I'm going to start over. I don't think you really know, have it until you've to have that desire to advance your career, right? Until you kind of know what you want to do. I think it's hard to have imposter syndrome because you don't know what you're, you know, you're trying to achieve. I think Maybe? what happens to me is when somebody like you comes to me and asks my opinion on something or asks if I know how to do something. Like to me, I'm like, how is Mark Rackley coming to me with a question? Surely Mark Rackley knows everything. And so I think for me, it's, it's that so much of, of, of the people I respect, right? I respect people who have a lot of knowledge. And so therefore to earn respect, I feel like I need to have a lot of knowledge. And so somebody told me one time, and I loved this, that you're an expert when you know one more thing than your audience. Like it doesn't take a whole lot, right? You just right. have to know one more thing. And so I feel like to that extent, it's easier for me to consider myself an expert. But the imposter syndrome comes when somebody asks me a question that I don't know the answer to. And now I feel like I'm not worthy of respect because I don't know everything. And I know that that is a ridiculous thing to say. But literally, I feel like if I'm not knowledgeable, I am not worthy of respect. Huh. So I'm going to I'm going to go. Um, so I, I, SharePoint, I think, is a, is really where all this started for both of us, right? When we really right. when we met back in 2008, 2009. Up until that point in my career, I was just mainly a developer. I was a code monkey. But I'd mm -hmm. always been kind of like the the young, sharp kid who knew, like, oh, let's get Mark and he can do this. And I could. It was like writing code. Code is code. And then when I got SharePoint, they're like, here's SharePoint, go do SharePoint. And I'm like, okay, something else for me to do. Then it's like, what the hell is SharePoint? Like, uh, uh, Google, there's nothing in Google. Um, 
And, uh, you know, I just started, I started failing. And maybe for the first time, I really had to ask people for help. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I think that's what's, what's helpful, why I ask, can ask people questions is because this thing, SharePoint has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. Now it's Microsoft 365 and it's literally, literally everything under the sun and they change it every two weeks. Something's always different. Mm -hmm. So you can't know everything and somebody's going to know something that you don't know. So yes, I've got a lot of knowledge from over the years, but a lot of it's worthless knowledge because so much has changed. And I really try to approach every situation now with like, everybody knows something I don't know. Everybody. Sure. So there's a certain amount of respect that you can give to everyone. Um, And there's a certain amount of humility you can approach everybody with and be like, I just understand you don't have to know it all. There's too much to know it all. So, so it's, it's not a big deal that you don't know everything. Well, and now, of course, I mean, now we've got Syntex, we've got Viva, we've got Purview, we've got, I mean, we have all of these things to try to stay on top of. And I think it's interesting because personalities like ours get pegged to know or learn the latest technologies. And so we can't really ever rest on, we can't ever really rest on our experience because now, I I don't know that anybody doesn't know. I mean, back, back with Twitter, we were one of a thousand people who knew SharePoint. Like, we literally can remember when there were only a thousand people on Twitter and we were a part of that group. Oh, absolutely. Um, and so now I would never, I would never think in a million years somebody would ask me a SharePoint question just because y- you type it in and there's probably a Microsoft document on it now. Right. Yeah. So, so I think for me now, the imposter syndrome may actually be coming from those personalities, right? The people who blog all the time, the people who have YouTube channels, the people like Mike Gennati, you know what I mean? The people who they, they seem to have a, a priority of time that I just don't share. And now, and so I feel less than because I don't blog, because I don't, Uh, do the videos because I don't, you know, I mean, you know, I throw some stuff out there on LinkedIn every once in a while, but I feel like I'm failing my community because I'm not, you know, I'm not contributing to, to the knowledge of the community now either. But just because you're not contributing to the knowledge of the community, I mean, I I get that. I mean, I do. And and if if I look back at the job I was at before joining Avanade, um, I was spending most of my time running a company and not giving back as much as I wanted to. And, you know, I, it's things I didn't even enjoy as much, but stuff I had to do, you know, to pay the bills to like, and it's not, I did nothing to help the community, but, but with, you know, but you know, people who know everything, right? Mm -hmm. You don't know everything, but you know, people that know everything. So when someone says, I need help with this, you could say, go talk to Gennady, Gennady, and go talk to like, you know, Jeremy Fake, go talk to all these people who know it. Right. And you don't have to, and it's, it's just, it's, Part of that makes the community great is you don't have to know it all, but you can still add value to someone who's asking a question. I have yeah. no idea, but I know that Sue Hanley is going to be able to answer that question and she'll be happy to do so. Absolutely. Yeah. And you bring up a good point with the network. So I remember I worked for a company one time and um, and they and and uh, actually this is actually this is another great story that includes another Avanade employee, Denise Wilson. So I was working at a company. And they had wanted um, like a a case study or they they wanted to go have lunch with someone who had done a SharePoint 20. I think we were back in 2010 back then, a SharePoint 2010 rollout. And, um, you know, I was really active in the SharePoint Saturday community. uh, And I said, well, I know that Continental Airlines has done it and I know who's done it. And uh, I'll I'll set up a dinner. I'll set up a I'll, I'll set up a lunch or something, and we can all talk. And they said you've just done something for us that we've asked Microsoft to do countless times, and Microsoft has not put us together with someone. They said your value to us is 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 more about your network, not just what you know how to do, but the people you know. Yeah. And that was an incredibly powerful lesson for me to learn early on in my career. Yeah, I mean, it's it's why we're at. It's why we're it's why I'm at Avanade. You know, it's yeah. because of this the community that we've been a part of. 
And I think a lot of it just comes from that place of wanting to help and wanting to be a part of it. And it's, it's, it's actually a really welcoming community. If you let yourself like, you know, not be intimidated and not succumb to the imposter syndrome, but like, just kind of be there, just kind of be present. And, and okay. That's interesting. Intimidated. I think that might sum it up more than anything. What makes us intimidated? What makes us feel like we're not just as good as, you know, as the person up there speaking? That's a good question. It's like, and I think you, I guess you, people don't truly understand that the people, the people up there speaking, they're not, I mean, they're just a regular person. I mean, there's just well, like, well, okay. Think about all those people that like, that was the whole point of SharePoint Saturday was trying to encourage new speakers to yeah. come into the community. How many people did we counsel time and time again? And we just could not get people to submit sessions because they were just, they felt inadequate. So, and this is where, and this is one of the things that really helped me overcome imposter syndrome because I, and I really don't suffer from it anymore because I've just got to the point in my career where it's like the biggest secret to overcoming imposter syndrome. This is it. Failure is great. You have to learn to embrace the fact that you could utterly fail and fall flat on your face. But mm -hmm. if you don't try, you'll never know. And if you fail, you know what? People are actually going to help you when you fail. They're not going to ridicule you when you fail. That's a good point. So, if, I mean, you're I'm gonna in a, say, if you're in a good community and we are in a good community. Yeah. And if you have the right motives, right, you do yeah. kind of have to have, you got to be approach it with humility, approach it like you, like that you're not just, oh, I know everything. I can't be wrong. I mean, just be a good, kind person who's wanting to be helpful. And if you can do that and be open to the fact that you don't know everything because you don't. Yeah. And if you fail, people are going to support you. The first time I spoke, the very first time. I ever spoke publicly was a few weeks before I met you in Tulsa and it was an hour long session and I was done in half an hour and I was just standing there like, uh, you know. <laughs> are there any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there's a guy in the front row. I'll never forget. He's like, well, I can see you're passionate about this. <laughs> I just like, but uh, but you could say I failed, you know, and I've spoken several times where I've gotten bad reviews. I was so jet lagged once that one of my demos totally failed and I couldn't remember why. I just couldn't. My brain couldn't work to figure out why was this not working. And yeah. I had to apologize and say, I'm just I'm sorry, guys. I just I I forgot <laughs> and I had to apologize. But like. It I, did a, I did a Teams demo once and didn't didn't realize that like from a from a licensing perspective or whatever it was i was literally trying to teach people how to do teams in meetings and i didn't have the calendar icon on my teams i didn't have it hooked up to an outlook like license or whatever it was i mean and and i'm just sitting there going i literally cannot demo this for you right now i am so sorry about that you know and so you know that's interesting you say that because I think that there are times when when our reputation can get us through that. But when we're new, that I would never I mean, that would have that would have if that would have happened to me when I was new, I would have never spoken again. Oh, yeah, yeah, me too. And I, and I think you have to have the right expectations, right? You don't yeah. want to you don't enter this with doing something that you know, you haven't done before that you, that you don't have a super high level of co confidence and comfort in to where yeah. something does go wrong. You can just pivot and talk through it. Right. It's, I mean, yeah. Yeah. When you first start speaking on something, pick something you're super comfortable in like yeah. case studies, right? There's nothing that can go wrong in a case good study. Point. That's and a good people point. love to hear about case studies. Like, so don't, don't start, you know, at the 400 foot level, try, you know, just, you know, <laughs> come at it at the right approach, but also be okay just you know like i said be okay failing okay so so for me so one of the things that i spend a lot of time um mentoring other you know young professionals on is really just how to advocate for yourself so what advice do you give somebody who is literally trying to advocate for themselves and has imposter syndrome how do you just tell them to do it anyway 
So what people have to understand, and I tell my kids this, right? And, and it, um, a lot of times people think like, I've got to prove myself. I have to like, I can't ask for help. If, if I ask for help, then I, I am an imposter because I couldn't do it on my own. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a lie. That is a lie. There's a reason we have this network of people like so that they, people we meet can help us when we need it. If, if someone says, Hey, I can help you get accepted to speak at a conference, or I can help you get to the next level. Mm -hmm. It's not a failure for you to accept that. And that doesn't make you an imposter. It makes it's, it's called networking. That's, that's like one of the benefits of networking. It's like, you know, they call it the old boils. What if I'm not, what if I'm not even willing to reach out and ask Mark Rackley for help? Then it, it, at some point, you're going to have to step outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. I'm going to say it's not that yeah. important to you then. If you're not willing yeah. to step out of your comfort zone, it's not that important to you. I'm sorry. We all had to do it. We all had to step out. That's fair. So yeah. here's the thing that here's the thing that I've recognized about executives here at Avanade, and I think it came up in your in your blog post as well, is is I have I have set up meetings with executives at Avanade just to ask these questions like how do I get to the next level what's some advice that you have for me how can I start speaking at conferences how can I represent Avanade and I'm always incredibly grateful at the time that they give me and you know what what one of them in particular said to me I'm going to say his name Jonathan Summer said he said these are the meetings we want to have like this is this is what we want to do. We love these meetings. We will yeah. always accept these meetings. And that really helped me a lot from a cultural perspective to help me do more of what you're saying. It, to, it, it, to say, it's okay if I reach out to somebody who's a level or two higher than me asking, how do I get to the next level? Yeah. And I, I think people like they naturally want, I think people naturally want to help people. They naturally yeah. want to be saying, help you get that. Mentoring someone who wants to be mentored, That's leading true. somebody who wants, who's hungry for that. It's, 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 it's invigorating, right? It's energizing. It's, it's, you're trying to mentor someone, mentor someone who's like, oh, I don't, I don't want to take that. I don't want to step outside my comfort zone. I don't want to do that. I don't, and they're, they just don't want to I don't own know it. You, I don't know if it's just stepping outside your comfort zone. I think I'm going to pull it back to something you said earlier. I don't want to fail. Mm. And I why? Think, but but why? What's wrong with failing? I mean, like yeah. you learn more from failure than you do every single success of your life. And and you say that, and this is where I'm going to bring like some of the sexism into it. There are huge com- there are huge consequences for women who fail. There really are. And I'm sure there are huge consequences for men who fail as well. But women are kind of taught and brought up, whether it's true or not. But we are taught that we've got one shot. We've got one shot. And if we screw that up, we're never going to get called to the table again. And I'm sure men feel that way, too. That's why I say I'm bringing it up only through the experience of my own eyes. Um, but gosh, it's in, it's in Hamilton too, right? You know, I mean, it's a whole song in Hamilton about his shot, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not giving away my shot. Right. And I think that I think, or maybe sometimes we just don't recognize this is your shot. This is the one you have to take. Yeah. And, and I hope that's getting better. I've heard that a lot too, but I really hope that's getting better. I, I really do. Um, I can't say, and I can't really speak to it as much. I, I've always been like, if you get an opportunity and you don't take it, there's going to be another opportunity. And you're going to learn from not getting this opportunity what's next. You're, there's not just one shot. There's no, okay. there's going to be another yeah. shot and another shot. And I think it's, a lot of it is just like learn from it and, and move on. Like I, 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 you talk about how like people, one of the things, the biggest distinctions I've seen with people being able to like advance in their career uh, and I've heard this with gender too, between men and women, is that when a new opportunity is presented to you, uh, men are more apt to say, hey, I'm going to go for it. I don't yeah. have all these skills. But Even I if I don't have this. the experience, I'm going to go for it. And women are like, well, I need to get this and this and this, and that's then right? I can go for it. And it's, and I think that's a big distinction. And I think just like, you, you don't have to be everything that you need to be now Right. You have to believe in yourself enough to, to know you can grow into it. Um, or know that you have the people, like you said, the people behind you 
So what I'm hearing us say, actually, tell me if you disagree, but what I'm hearing us say is how you get over imposter syndrome is you just have a really strong network. You have a strong network of people that you can rely on to, to be there for you, even if you fail, who still believe in you. You've got a strong network of people that you can ask for advice and counsel, um, and, you, and, and, you, and you have a strong network of people who are telling you, you need to submit for this conference. You need to do this thing. You should, I mean, I, I'll go that's step further. the other thing about women. Women more than men, I think, need to be invited. So so if you just do a call for speakers and you put it out on Twitter, right? I guarantee you women, most women had an extra step where somebody said, you should do this. Okay, I think that's fair. Um, yeah. I'm gonna add to that though. Not only do you need a strong network to give you all that support, you need people that you trust to to criticize you. Is say, you know what? That oh. wasn't great. You can do better. And here's how you can do better. Yeah, you you're a big, you, you're a big one with that. Because I, I I will tell people like, hey, that was great, but it could mm-hmm. be better if you did this. And and I think that's also I think that help I think that feedback also helps overcome imposter syndrome because you know areas that you could be doing better and you have something that you can work for look for to get back to get better and then when that person that provided the criticism says this is good mm-hmm. you've got you can believe that because they haven't always been like yeah well, yeah it, you're great you're great they're like no no you weren't great but but now you are and i think that could help too i mean i think i think if you tell that to most people though they would be mortified by that they would be absolutely mortified at this concept that they're going to take you know criticism but i think it's just, it's just a loaded word right so that's how it comes to like it have an yeah it is a word. it's the it's the whole growth mindset thing right and so i love that we have that training this idea that says that 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 the i think it's it's everything we're saying right that that it's it's okay to fail um everything is an opportunity for growth um yeah i think i think that that's a good point that that you do have to get yourself to a point where you can handle constructive criticism, where you can handle. And this just happened to me, actually, our share, our shared resource, uh, Anthony Vitnall. He uh, I was I was in one of these calls with executives, did what I always do, completely interrupted, talked over the speaker. And it was Michelle Caldwell that I did it to. <laughs> so. I just like threw up all of this information about what I wanted. And Michelle was like, okay, that's a lot. Like, let's just take it one at a time. And I kept just trying to get my point across. And so Anthony, uh, we met for breakfast and he, he gave me a book and it was called deep listening. And he, and he cited that example. And he said, you know, this is just something that, you know, that I, I think would, would be good, would be good for you. And I remember taking that and maybe for the first time in my life saying, oh, my gosh, Avanade is investing in me. Like they literally are giving me skills and want me to be better so that I can go to the next level. But it was fascinating to me that I'm now at a place in my career where it's soft skills that I need to be developing, not technology skills. Well, I think soft skills are the more rare skills these days for technology people. And I think that's what really sets us apart. But uh, like. Like you bring up Michelle Caldwell, she is brutally honest with me. She, she is single-handedly responsible for keeping my ego in check, you could even say. But um, I will seek out her advice about things because I know she'll be harsh with me. And I know that she will like not sugarcoat anything. She'll tell me if it's a dumb idea or why I shouldn't do it. But that's the advice I'm actually seeking out. I'm not seeking out the people that are just going to be like, oh, yeah, great, go do it, or or passive permission. I, I want to know, is is this the right path? Is this where I should be spending my time? Is this a bad idea? Um, because then when you get that okay, like, yes, this is great, the confidence that you're on the right path is that much more. Um, I just think people have to get to a point where, I mean, it, it's really, I mean, it is okay to fail. It is okay to not be great at everything. I mean, you've got to have room to grow. And it's how do you keep your confidence if you fail? Like you can't do everything. You can't. And in fact, so I I 
recent my my first project at uh, Avanade, I actually was able to like kind of pull it out of the fire and save it. And I was getting all this praise for it. And I said, just remember this for when I screw up. And I, I know I said that because I, I am because I will I will step out there and try things. And not everything is going to work. But it's like if you do bring yourself your whole self, if you try to add you try to add value, you try to, to make things better, you know, people see that and people embrace that. And then when you do good things, they notice that. And then when you fail, I'm, I'm going to fail. I'm say I am going to fail at some point. I am. So as an outside observer of you, though, I think there's also something to be said about just your resilience. So I think the piece you might be leaving out for our listeners is that you're willing to fail, but I don't think you give up. So like talking oh, no. about the project, so the project that, that that you took over for me on, right? So you came in with a completely different skill set that was fantastic. And the, the, you know, you were able to do something I never could have done. Um, and I was so glad that you were able to be on that project. But at the end of it, the client still said, well, maybe this is, maybe this direction is, isn't for us. Like maybe this solution isn't going to work. You didn't give up. You went directly to Microsoft and you said, hey, I've got somebody and you you literally put them in touch with Microsoft to say, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up this solution. And so I I think that's fair to add that to your I'm not, a, you know, I'm not afraid to fail because I don't give up. <laughs> no, that's fair. That's fair. Um, that's fair. But at some point, I mean, like, well, I was just distinctly being in this discussion with the client he's like this this is not going to work for us and here's all the reasons why this is not going to work and I, I i just i was trying to think my consultant brain i'm like I said yeah you're right that's a huge problem <laughs> and he was like taken aback that i agreed with him that yeah. he, and, I, and they they appreciated that too i wasn't like i was being honest empathetic i'm like yeah this you're right this is a huge you're issue right. You can't yeah. overcome this right now. This is why we do a proof of concept. So right. it, it, it doesn't always work. <laughs> but they were appreciative. They, you know, they they spent this time and this money to figure out mm -hmm. it didn't work. And they found value in that. And yeah. I was able to go this step further and say, well, let me get you connected to the product owner so that you can help tell them what you think. And we can try to move forward. Yeah. All right. So how do you want to close this out? Um, I think that to, to just, I don't want to be, I don't hope I didn't sound flippant about imposter syndrome. I know it's a big thing. I know to some people it's really crippling every time you step out on stage, like this is, you know, what if I fail? I don't deserve, deserve to be here. I'm just like, we, we all deserve to be exactly where we are, wherever we got there, whether someone helped you get there, whether you just worked your butt off and did it all on your own. Everybody deserves to be exactly where they are. And here's the thing. And, and I tell this to everybody, who's, especially those who are like, who are afraid to ask for help. It doesn't matter how you got there. It doesn't matter how you got the opportunity. You know, it was called the old boys network for a reason. Because mm -hmm. you think they didn't deserve to be there. They didn't work their way there. They used their network. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how you got there. It matters what you do with your opportunity when you get the chance. I agree so, with that. So, Take advantage of every opportunity that's been given to you. Go for it. And when you fail, learn from it. Every, I would, you know, I, I'm responsible for hiring people too, or, or I was before. I'm not sure if I am now, but yeah, I'm sure I've seen it. But, <laughs> but, but it's like, I would much rather hire somebody who is like, will take a failure and fail and learn from that failure and move on. You know, it's, it's okay to fail. Don't fail the same way every time. Fail every day just don't fail the same way every time and okay. you are someone that i would work with any day of the week i think the other thing that i would add to that is back to something really subtle that you said i think you and i have a different definition of respect and so and so gosh i may i'm i'm probably going to get this this kind of quote wrong but it's this idea that some people think that that um that respect is it is is earned and then some people believe that respect is it's just a given right like like it, it's almost like 
like it can be taken away, but, but, but some people just walk into a situation and just assume everyone is worthy of respect. Right. Um, whereas for me, I'm very like military about it. Like I passed this test, I did this thing and now I have this rank, you know what I mean? Um, and so I think there is what I'm taking away from this conversation with you is, um, is, yeah, it's, it's like you said, rank isn't always going to be based on the same set of rules that I made for myself. Right. And so if we can learn to just respect our own rank, like, like you're here for a reason, you did whatever it was you did, or you knew whoever you knew. Um, and, and you know what, here's the way, here's the way I want to end it. Or for me, this is kind of my thing I want to say. So I literally had a situation pop up where somebody got hired at a lower level than me. And I felt terrible. Like, I honestly felt like an imposter. This person who I consider a peer was, was, came in at a lower level. And you know what my CAs told me? She said, three people interviewed you and three people interviewed them. If, if you, they, people decided, right? Three people interviewed you and decided this was your level. Three people interviewed them and decided that was their level. This has nothing to do with your perception of the person or that person's perception of you. This has to do with here are our leveling guidelines. And you hit our leveling guidelines at this level and they hit it at this level. Um, but it really, really affected me a lot. Um, and in the same way, I would have assumed that you would have gotten hired at a higher level than me. So that's my imposter syndrome there. It's like, I don't feel like I'm any better than anybody in my community. So I assume we would all come in at the same level. But that's not necessarily the case. It depends on what skills we need. It depends on, you know, what... Um, yeah, like, like the different kinds of projects. So now the more I've worked with this person, the more I understand why I got put up at a higher level and it has more to do with my project management experience instead of my technical savvy, if that gotcha. makes sense. It does. Yeah. Absolutely does. But so now we're back thing, to soft skills. Well, so the, the other thing you think about is, and the things that I think we all need to keep in mind is the opposite side of that. If someone gets brought in higher than you that yeah. you think why is that person higher than me then it's a big blow to your ego yeah. because everybody has ego too and that's something that it, and that's closely to imposter syndrome is is thinking too highly of yourself i think maybe and yeah. and i think that's something that we just have to everybody fights with as well too it's like how do you want to handle the blows to your ego there's the it, it, it life is complicated <laughs> <laughs> but the important thing is, is that we all ended up here and uh, and we all get to work together. I mean, to me, if you would have told me when we met, I, I'm embarrassed to say how long ago it was now. But, um, you know, if you would have told me that we would be working together, you know, one day for the same company for completely different reasons. I mean, but the fact that we got hired within about a year of each other um that that would have made me really happy so yeah i would love to see all of the people that we started with in this community be at Avanade. <laughs> yeah that's my goal you know yeah that's my goal we'll get there we'll get there we'll get there all right thank you so much for the conversation mark absolutely bye bye